Welcome everybody, another episode of Sipping and Tipping with the Andersons. I got Jack along with us again uh, here at Cork and Cap That's and uh, to kind of help us along with some wines today. Um, one we're going to try today is uh, Chateau Woolery. Uh, it's actually out of the Loire Valley in France and it's a gorgeous place to go in the spring. Uh, the wine itself is uh, a wine called a Chenin Blanc and a Chenin Blanc is, you know, it's kind of a neat wine because you, know, you can use about anything with the thing. Right, yeah. it's good with seafood, uh, actually good with sushi, of mm -hmm. all things. Uh, Chenin Blanc, uh, South Africa, they're making mm -hmm. really good ones that are dry. And uh, this is just a perfect example of, uh, you know, the ideal place for Chenin Blanc to grow and, and a really great, crisp, dry way. Well, I think Chenin Blanc's a great example. A lot of people heard of Sauvignon Blanc, a lot of people hear Chardonnay, but I think Chenin Blanc's a great unknown for a lot of people that they should try. I think because it goes either from really dry to really sweet, coming to somebody like you here is the way to go because you can kind of point them in the direction of what their tastes are because they're all over the place. This is a great ABC wine, anything but Chardonnay. <laughs> person. Well, we're going to try another wine from the same winery. Um, the Loire Valley is really known for two big grapes. Really, Chenin Blanc is the one, the big white, and the red is Cabernet Franc. Uh, so, uh, Philippe also makes a Cabernet Franc out of the Loire Valley here. Uh, a much, much darker wine. You know, you see Cab Franc around uh, here in Michigan even. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is, is it's, it's uh, more conducive to growing in climates that are a little bit cooler. Okay. Uh, they grow a lot of it in Bordeaux. It's, a, it's usually a blending grape with uh, mm -hmm. Merlot and, mm -hmm. and some Cab Sav. But I would say the premier place in the world where you can get uh, wines that are 100% Cabernet Franc is mm -hmm. definitely the Loire mm -hmm. Valley. Yeah, it's got a nice dark color to it, good fruit, just kind of a stunning color. Mm. Nice nose. Mm. Yeah. And it's almost got a, like a black pepper character going on in there. So, you know, if you were doing something like a steak with a peppercorn sauce or something, this just would be perfect for it. Just go right into that, right into the wheelhouse with it. Uh, so we're going to a winery called Las Pardesas. Uh, nice winery uh, owned uh, by the Munez family. They've been around uh, for quite a while now. Uh, but a beautiful winery, beautiful operation. Uh, we're going to try a couple unusual wines. Usually when everybody gets talking about Argentina, they're talking Malbec, 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 and maybe Cabernet. Okay, uh, But we're going to try a couple different. First one we're going to try here is going to be a Syrah Viognier. And it's kind of weird, that's a weird blend. Right, what it is, it's the, uh, the blend that is traditionally used in Northern Rome. Okay. Yeah, you know, and you get a Syrah, you got a red grape, a lot of people are familiar with it because you do get it here in Michigan, but the Viognier is a little different, it's a white wine grape. So you're talking about blending red and white wine, which, uh, you know, you get the strength of the red, but then you get the little softness from the white. And a little spiciness too that, it, mm -hmm. that the Viognier adds. I've always thought it's a really nice blend. I've always liked that combination. It, that, that, that white just takes that acidity down a little bit out of that, mm -hmm. out of that uh, Syrah, so that makes it really a pleasant drink. Well, we got another one here for you too. This one's kind of a special wine. A lot of times, like we said, when you get talking about uh, Argentina, you're always talking Malbach, but this is actually one that's from Argentina. Uh, right. This is a Bernarda grape, and Bernarda is not a real common grape. Uh, I think it's an excellent wine. Well, and a couple of things that are interesting about Bonarda. One is, my understanding, it is the most widely planted grape in Argentina. Yep. Even though maybe 10 years ago, nobody had heard of it in mm -hmm. the United States, they were keeping it all for themselves. And well, it's relatively recently that they've started to uh, export it. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, the most common thing in Argentina, most of the restaurants you go to, Bonarda is what everybody is, what they're drinking in the bars. I mean, that's the normal, everyday glass drinking wine. And my understanding, um, not Melbach. My understanding too is that it's actually an Italian varietal. If you're a big Cabernet drinker, you like big, rich Cabernets out of California, this should be right up your line. It's got a yeah, really nice mouthfeel. It's yeah, velvety smooth. And, you, and you're talking a lot less than a lot of these big, over, over, you know, over powerful and overpriced wines out of California. So it'd be really a neat wine to give a chance to and give it a try and see what you think. Okay. Well, thank you, Jack. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for coming out and everything. And I want to thank all of you for allowing us to come and visit you for another time in your home. So um, enjoy, have a good time, and see you another day. Salute.